Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Change the F Up. Of course, as always, we are, you know what, I'm just going to wait until the end. Of course, I am your host, Nate the Effing Great, joined here by my lovely co-host, the one, the only, Victory Bell, who has had quite a week that, oh my gosh, I mean, you've had the uh, Magic of the Gathering uh, event this past weekend, and then you were also uh, dressed up as a member of KISS this past week. Quite a bit, an eventful week for you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm getting back into it. It was a slow December and beginning of January, but uh, we're already, we're getting the ball rolling and I'm starting to dress up in no wacky things, new wacky things for for 2017. 2017. (laughs) 2017. Some people are not yet quite to the 2017 transition, but they'll get to it by the time December comes around. Then it's like, oh, wait, it's almost the end of the year. Now we got to get to 2018. It's like, yeah, that kind of sucks for you. But uh, I guess I can make this small bit of an announcement. I've actually been invited by Mr. Deadgar Winter to actually participate in the Deadgar's Dark Coffin Classic. So I am proud to announce that I will be a part of one of their episodes this summer. So guys, stay tuned to that. I'm guaranteeing you that it's going to be an awesome appearance. Probably not as awesome as, you know, when you came on as Maleficent, but... Maybe. We'll see. That's cool, though. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually commented it because he had that, like, massive post that said, you know, you know, uh, maybe we'll have you on the show, and then there's everybody tagged, and I just said, well, I'm just waiting for my invite, and he just said, well, I just gave it to you, so <laughs> in the most <laughs> indirect way possible, but still. <laughs> nice. Good. That, that, hey, that works. So, that. so this week, you guys, we are talking again about Disney Uh, We're going to start off by talking about each giving two movies that we would like to see Disney do, uh, possibly as a future production or something that they could do now, and then afterwards we're going to actually go through a list of movies that they actually have planned out to make either a live action movie, and we'll kind of give our thoughts about it. Uh, We'll call it a segment called Thumbs Up or Thumbs Down. If we like it, we give it a thumbs up. If we don't, then thumbs down. But we'll get into that in just a bit, so for right now... Let's kick off with some ideas that I think Disney would like. And Hollywood, please pay attention. Send us money. (laughs) (laughs) So, I think I want to kind of start off with this one. Because this is one that's been kind of itching at me for so long. And I really hate the fact that it ended on such a sour note. And I really want to start by them having a, a Disney Channel original series be turned into a movie. And the series I'm talking about is Phil of the Future. And for those of you that don't know, basically, well, let me see if I can sing basically a a bit of the song. It was like, uh, how did it go? Uh, Meet a boy named Phil and his family on vacation from the 22nd century. Basically like that. It was a really cool series. I loved it. It's just about this futuristic family coming to the present time, dealing with everything, you know, present day. So they had to learn how to, like, clean dishes, had to learn how to, cook and everything like that is really cool uh while the father was actually working on fixing the time machine and even some of the stuff from the future they brought to the present so there were like certain diseases that they had where they had uh what was it like this kind of green skin deal where any uh characteristics that they didn't have they would actually uh would basically trade like the little sister, she was always mean, and she would just turn into, like, this, you know, da- daddy's little girl. Uh, Phil was always the nice guy, and then he turned into a bit of a jerk. Uh, it was really one of those things that I thought was really cool. And they even had a caveman in there, which really kind of caught me. But how the series ended was just so... It was so abrupt, and it just came out of nowhere, where they had the family basically going back, and by that time, Phil and... Uh, I'm trying to remember her name. I think it was, uh, I think it was either Al- Allie or AJ Mashaka played the character of AJ. Keely. Yeah, yeah, AJ, well, thank you. Allie, Allie, Allie. Yeah, it was yeah. Allie. Um, she basically, they basically got, they basically became a couple, and it kind of ended off like that, but then they decided to go back because they forgot the caveman. And I'm thinking, that's kind of a weird way to end it. I think they need to do something. I'm pretty sure that they could do something uh, nowadays, where they could have, you know, the fact that they decided to stick around just for a little while, maybe they realize that 
their time in the present is now making havoc for, you know, things in the future, like, you know, this person was supposed to do this, create, like, one of those rippling time effects, like in Back to the Future, where it's one of those things where they have to make that tough decision. Do they go back, or do they stay where they are? I think that would actually be really cool to do. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you think? For Bill the Future? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I was a, a fan of the show, but again, like I said, I wasn't like super duper into the Disney original series and stuff. But, you know, I liked Even Stevens, Boy Meets Girl, or yeah, Boy Meets yeah. World Girl. <laughs> um, Boy Meets Girl. I liked all those, all the all the real character ones, and I thought Phil the Future was a really cute one, especially with the little kind of goofy romance of Phil and. And the Alley girl. I don't know her real name. <laughs> uh, it was uh, Keely was the character name. Okay, okay. There we go. Um, but yeah, I don't know if they could bring it back, though. I, I can't I can't see that happening. Because, I mean, the, the characters, which was the weirdest thing, I, I always see this now in movies uh, and series that I watch, is how, how old the stars actually are. Like, I know Phil was, like, 30 when he was playing, like, <laughs> A, a, yeah, like a 16-year-old. Jeez. Um, so he's definitely kind of, I feel like they're all a little old, but I guess if they rebooted it, like, h- how did you want, like, a totally new cast, or? I think I would still keep, like, the same cast, and like I said, it would just basically, um, it would be like a continuation, like, you know, they decided to stick around, maybe they fast-forward a bit to where, you know, Keely and Phil, they went to college, and they're just about to, you know, uh, Phil's just about to, you know, propose to her, but then that's when the chaos all ensues. Uh, maybe Pim is, like, uh, fi- finally, like, in a leadership role, but not, a, like, a dictator for, you know, like she always wanted, but she's one of those leaders who's actually content with everything. Maybe the parents are doing something more with their lives, stuff like that, and I can understand that problem. Uh, maybe they could try to... I don't know, maybe try to reboot reboot it like you suggested into a new series. Maybe they can have like a new cast where uh, maybe Keeley and Phil have already gotten married and they have like a kid and he wants to kind of go to the future and see how things go from there. Uh, it would be kind of interesting to see that. I don't know. It's just one of those things where I thought it just ended on such a sour note and I think that he needs to have a better send-off than what they did with the last episode. Yeah, I mean, at least they did semi-end it, though. Because a lot of series, I feel like they don't complete it. And it's like, oh, okay, I guess we just... Like, I guess this happens more kind of in anime than anywhere else for me. Just just because, like, the series just abruptly ends. Or, or it's like a cliffhanger, and it's like, oh, season two is not ever coming. And you're like, what? <laughs> Almost, I mean, one great example that's finally coming to us is Attack on Titan Season 2. Because Attack on Titan's now been out for at least, I think, two or maybe three years in Japan. And they're like, this year they're making Season 2. And it ended on such a crazy note. Like, you're like, this, I mean, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but like this crazy, huge, badass Titan is attacking everyone and it was a, you know, a very big twist in the story, and you're like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> this person is a Titan, what? And she's killing everybody, and then they catch her, and then you're like, oh, okay, we're waiting for season two. Oh, no, no there is no season two. So what, are, what happened to her? And I get they want you to, like, read the manga and stuff like that, and read, read other things, which... It makes me do. I do have to read because I need to find out. But um, I'm glad there's season twos are coming. But I, I mean, did you feel like Phil the Future really like abruptly ended, or I feel like you know they went back to the future? Well, it was just kind of how like it kind of ended, where they seemingly forgot about uh, the caveman Curtis, and they were just going back, and then Curtis was in the house, and he's just wondering where the family is, and that's kind of how it ended. It's like. Well, do they get Curtis back, or what goes on? So that was kind of where my thought process was, because I it definitely felt like one of those cliffhangers that just really needed to at least be addressed or something like that. And plus, like we mentioned before, a lot of the characters there were so memorable. I thought that Curtis, the caveman, was 
honest to God, one of my favorite characters, especially there was one episode where he took Pym to like this, uh, uh, what was it? It was, um, it was a movie, uh, creepy crawlies, which was like a spider movie or something like that. But, uh, and it was just like everybody's freaking out, and Curtis is just sitting there eating popcorn, and he's just hoping for rocks because he wanted to see the movie uh, Rocky Ridge, which I guess was about like uh, rock formations and stuff like that. And and uh, Pim says, "There's a lot of creepy crawlies. There's probably at least a rock or two in the movie." And during the movie, he's just eating popcorn, like, huh, "No rock, not even pebble." I'm just like, <laughs> "Wow, this guy's awesome." <laughs> Cause, that, cause, actor, that actor, I forget what. It, is, but he is hilarious. I've seen him in a, quite a few things after Phil of the Future, and the funny thing is, I'm always like, oh, that's the guy from Phil of the Future. <laughs> like, I think he's been in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something like that. I think he was probably, and, in, I think he was in one episode, yeah, I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, like as one of those, like, advisor secretary guys, who's just goofy and who gets, you know, pooped on for the most part, like... <laughs> What happened? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Holy cow, he's still alive. <laughs> Let go. But um, yeah, no, I could see that. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting money behind this idea just because, as I said, my personal choices. I think the cast is a little old now, but I, I mean, I could see wanting to reboot something like that. That was a good idea for like Disney. They did a good series for that. At least with Disney reboots, they're good, unlike certain other ones. But we'll get into that conversation later, later on, or probably later in the year. But uh, enough about my first movie. What movie do you have in mind that you'd like to see Disney do? Well, my movie is kind of more like concepts that I haven't really... Like, this is like rough draft number one. Okay. This is not, it would, I would not step in front of like a board of... Uh, you know, people who want to fund my pilot and, like, be, like, ready, because I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think, um, you know, what movies really resonated with me, at, like, when I was young, and kind of what now I still like, and what's lasted over the time, and one constant theme, you know, is the princess movies, and we, we all know, like, oh, the princess movies, do they need more princesses? We don't know. But they seem to last, and they seem to really do good for Disney. So I was trying to think of a princess they haven't done, and one idea or kind of, you know, realm they haven't really touched is, like, the King Arthur realm. And I, I know some of their, their competitors have kind of done this. You know, like Quest for Camelot was a great movie, loved it. Wasn't a Disney movie. Um, but if they could do something maybe with Guinevere, which is, you know, the, the princess of Queen... Or, 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 yeah, Guinevere is the princess that is, like, the most beautiful princess in the land and everything, and she needs to be saved or she needs to, you know, the... She's stuck at this lake or whatnot, but we, you know, they can always flip it. That's what Disney likes to do now is they don't like to have the princess be this, like, helpless person. But, um, what I was thinking with that, you can also play off of, I'm going to go back into an anime series, which is Fate Stay Night or Fate Zero. Have you ever heard of that? Fate Zero. I don't think that, no, I haven't heard that of that one. It's really cool. This anime series is one of the best animations that I've seen, um. And it's just like a fighting anime. They're like all trying to fight for this, you know, the, this goblet or, or some sort of people who are real fans of the show are going to be like, have you ever watched this? I have. But they're, they're trying to all be like this sorcerer, the best sorcerer in the land. And there's usually seven people that fight and they get these like familiars, which are old pastime, like crazy historian, like bad badasses so like alexander the great is one king arthur is one and like uh different lancelot's one there's a bunch of different old history fighters that really make a big scene and they're they're really they're badass like gilgadesh is one too um and the king arthur in that series is actually a woman so king arthur like hid the fact that he was actually a woman. So I thought it would kind of be interesting, a different take on that is have King Arthur be a, a girl. And I know they did the Sword of the Stone 
but I think if they rebooted that and kind of made, you know, 